Atlantis Model Company was founded in 2009 by the owners of MegaHobby.com, Peter Vetri and Rick DeFavreau in Long Island, New York. Atlantis manufactures injected molded plastic kits, most of which are repops of old kits. The two men originally founded MegaHobby.com in 2000, but they'd always hoped to actually get into the business of making kits as well as just selling them. Mega Hobby was successful enough to give them a base from which to create Atlantis and eventually develop their own branded kits. The first kits were flying saucers designed by E.L. Pangman, the EVE saucer with the lights and the TR-3E triangular UFO. After that, they managed to get the molds and rights for the first sci-fi kit ever, the old Lindbergh UFO. Now, this kit had also been made by Glencoe and is currently being re-released by Polar Lights. But uh, in 2010, the newly formed Atlantis teamed up with Lindbergh to re-release this famous UFO. It's also somewhat infamous uh, for being used by the independent movie maker Ed Wood to make what many people consider the worst movie ever made. Plan 9 from Outer Space. Atlantis also brought back the old Aurora Wildlife model series. They did have to make some new steel tooling for the American Bison and a larger new sculpt of the Black Bear and Cubs kit, but they also reissued the White Stallion kit to help complete the group. Then they got a license from Ravel Monogram for the Zorro figure on his horse Tornado and even found the original tooling. They even got permission to use the original box art by Mort Kunstler. The relationship they formed with Ravel Monogram led to an opportunity to re-release the giant T-Rex kit from the old Aurora molds. You'll recall that Monogram ended up with most of Aurora's old molds, uh, just as Ravel obtained Renwalls before all four companies ended up together under single ownership. Atlantis was even able to obtain the rights to use the old prehistoric scene's name. Now, this was followed by a reissue of the old Aurora Blackbeard Pirate but it was made with a new mold that was reverse engineered because the original one had some bad fit issues. This delayed its release until 2012. The next addition to the line were repops of old Merit racing car kits. These were the Le Mans winners in 124 scale. They included the Alfa Romeo and the Lago Talbot, which had not been released for many years. This led to a new relationship with the Smear Company. Atlantis did release some toys beginning with a foot-long battery-operated Titanic in 2013. Through the newly formed relationship with Smear, Atlantis was able to reissue the old Aurora Viking ship in 2014, complete with the original box art and decals. The next kit, which sold out almost immediately, was the George Adamski Flying Saucer Kit. Now this was a UFO kit from Japan originally produced by Marmot. During this time, Atlantis was also working on some all-resin projects, including the German Valkyrie spacecraft, which was designed by Alfred Wong. That was followed by the Atlantis Lunar Shuttle by Jeff Palazzato of JP Model Works, and a Grim Reaper on Horseback by Hans Routers and Jimmy Flintstone. In 2015, the Earth vs. the Flying Saucers kit was released, followed by a reissue of the old Aurora's TV show Invaders UFO kit. As a kid, I always used to have nightmares that that thing would land in our front yard. This, of course, was done through the Ravel monogram relationship. In true Atlantis tradition, they used the original box art instructions and even included a color print of the original retail sell sheet. They were able to do this in no small part thanks to the help of an ex-Aurora employee named Andy Yanchis and I hope I said that right. Atlantis also continued to develop their paper line of models via a partnership with Lake Freighter. Now this is primarily a plastic kit model channel, but given Atlantis's commitment to paper models, I think it would be a disservice not to at least mention them. Although they may have been discontinued as I don't see them in the online website. Atlantis also made a line of wooden ship kits of famous ships from US history, beginning with the Edmund Fitzgerald, followed by the Monitor and Merrimack, which was actually the CSS Virginia, President John F. Kennedy's PT-109, and the Yorktown Aircraft Carrier. Again, I did not see these on the website either, so they may no longer be in production. In fact, I only saw five kit model ships on their website. The end of 2015 brought a new release with Smear of Aurora's old Black Falcon pirate ship. Both it and the Viking ship feature the original box art by John Steele. 
In 2016, Atlantis began with three new releases in their 5-inch saucer series. A new design by Raul Quiles Jr. developed from their EVTFS kit and based on the original designs by none other than the great Ray Harryhausen. For those who don't know, Harryhausen was famous for his stop motion effects. They also released an officially licensed Flash Gordon and Martian figure kit originally released by Revell back in 1965. This was followed by the Phantom and Voodoo Witch Doctor kit in 2017. More collaboration with Ravel led us to the reissue of the big 1 to 70 second scale Aurora DC-9 airliner in Hughes Air West colors, including the retro artwork. They also added a toy Gato slash Bilal class submarine to the motorized toy line. Two more flying saucers joined the 5 inch series that year. We have the I Wanna Believe saucer from the photo by Billy Meyer which, by the way, was made famous from the poster featured in Fox Mulder's office in the television show The X-Files, and a saucer based on the single-issue comic book from 1950 called Victory and His Flying Saucer. 2018, Atlantis Models purchased the tooling for many of the old monogram Ravel, Aurora, and Renwall kits from the new owners of Ravel. These molds are from the old tooling banks, and some of them date back to the early 50s. These were stored in Elk Grove, Illinois, and represent automotive, aircraft, ships, military, figure space, and a whole bunch of other subjects. They're also doing at least five of the famous Tom Daniel designs. So hopefully we will see more of these models coming out in the future. Well, that's the bulk of what I was able to find on Atlantis. Most of this information comes from their own website, and unlike many companies, they were kind enough to document a fairly extensive history of their own company. I want to wish them well. I'm going to grab one of their kits and see what I think of it. Have you built an Atlantis kit? What's your story? This is Max. Thanks for watching. They always ask me, Lady Gaga, what's your race? I only tell them I'm from a faraway place. Christina Aguilera looks like she could be my sis. But when she's driving her new Bentley, I'll be flying my spaceship. Can't deny.